Hello Astrotometry, this is a video response to a video by Justin asking about the most recent earthquake prediction. And I intentionally left the data, the images, that this prediction is based on out of that video. Um, I'm going to stop, start doing that for the predictions. And part of the reason is because I'm using the data um, in a way that the data wasn't necessarily intended to be used. And while I think that this is probably one of the most important discoveries and that the CEL project will be seen as probably the best use of public funds in the history of humanity. Um, the CEL project was designed to predict space weather for satellites. And so um, I'm not real terribly comfortable. I haven't heard from anybody in the CEL project. Um, I am kind of getting the vibe that, that people uh, at NASA are watching the videos but aren't necessarily in a position to say or do anything necessarily. It's all done by appointment, and so um, it kind of has to be recognized in some in some at some point in the scientific establishment. And my predictions um, right now, I don't think are as um, useful as they really need to be to do actual forecasting. And so there's there's a sort of uh, funny line there. Um, all of that said, the details about the uh, nature of the predictions and what they're based on are problematic for astrotometry because if I do a video on the nature of conventional solar physics, which I've considered doing a solar physics primer um, to get everybody up to speed on the conventional thinking in solar physics, which I'm pretty, pretty well versed in, if I do that, it's going to confuse uh, the interpretations in astrotometry, which are different. And so um, I'm really kind of torn there between um, presenting a, 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 a background understanding. Um, and so what I have to do is very carefully go in and look at each observation um, and each conceptual issue um, and then analyze it with respect to astrotometry, uh, weaving in the, the understanding of, of the conventional physics. For example, the coronal holes, um, which are very different than the coronal mass ejections. Um, a coronal hole does not produce a coronal mass ejection. A coronal mass ejection is produced by what's called an active region. And in astrotometry, these things, these features on the sun, are symptoms or coincident uh, things that correlate with things that are outside of the sun's sphere. In other words, if you consider what's moving, what appears to be moving in the sun's sphere, that's all reflected in what the sun appears to be. And so there's this hypersymmetry, this uh, hypertime uh, wavelength that exists between the moving objects and the sun itself that creates the appearance of the light that's moving from the sun in astrotometry. And so it's the orbital inconsistency of the Earth that's reflected in the coronal hole on the sun. So in other words, we see this hole in, this, in the solar corona. It's a foreshadow of mass on the Earth that is orbiting inconsistently with respect to a year because it is shifted because of an earthquake. And that's heavy. I mean, I realize that's, <laughs> you're saying, what? <laughs> but that's the way to analyze it with astrotometry. And the correlation exists you can try to find you can try to find an alternative explanation in three-dimensional solar physics, but it fails because if you if you calculate the mass or the the, the 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 potential disturbance of the incoming geomagnetic field, first of all, the geomagnetic field is is happens primarily uh, near the poles. Now, the reason it happens primarily near the poles is because there's also that polar ring, Justin, and that if you look on if you look on the uh, the solar monitor pages or the SOA pages, um, there's a there's a ring of activity, and you, up there in Canada you can see the Northern Lights, and you realize that that there's a ring that represents that same sphere that that is the the Earth's orbital eccentricity, where that time space folds off and gathers at the Moon, <laughs> and when there's an incons inconsistency in in the um, uh, the Earth's orbit, it also reflects in this other, in this other realm, the form of feedback in the common carrier. And since you're, you're familiar with the concept of frequencies, you understand that when you have a carrier wave, 
um, it and that produces a, a wave of a particular frequency. If if the thing that is absorbing or resonating with that wave of a particular frequency has its own movement, in other words, if if it moves independently, it's going to feed back into the into the carrier with that thing's um, uh, uh, frequency. And so what's happening technically is that the displaced Earth uh, from in, in the future in the future of the event is feeding back through the common carrier and resonating with what will be the earthquake and that that event is what creates the is, is coincident is coincident with the chrono you could say that it causes it you could say that there's a cause and effect relationship but that's just not a very good way to understand the structure of time space itself so there's a there's a resonation that happens with the earth's cycle in other words that happens with the earth's orbit around the sun the one year cycle and the, the best way to analyze it, the most the, the easiest way to wrap your head around what's happening in order to be able to do what I'm doing is to see that the coronal hole is actually a foreshadow of an event that is foreshadowed because of the inconsistency in the matter on the earth. You've got that move you get that, that area that moves. And it's that matter that moves that disrupts what we normally see uh, coming from the primary time axis. And so that's a coronal hole rather than a coronal mass ejection. And <laughs> it's all very sexual, isn't it? Um, but the, the, so the, 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 coronal, the, the coronal hole, uh, in the general shape of it and the size of it especially, um, is, indicates you know, how much dis of a disturbance there is going to be. And this, this uh, uh, averages out as time moves on uh, between the time when it's going to happen and the time uh, afterwards. And so there's a, there's a time um, ex uh, expansion in the corona of the sun because of the feedback in the common carrier. The feedback is, the feedback is continuous. It's not, it doesn't happen as a single event. I mean, the, the earthquake itself is this very brief event, but it's expanded in time in the form of the coronal hole. So the, the coronal hole itself is a time-expanded version of the earthquake as it relates to the disturbance in the common carrier that moves the Earth around the sun. So, <laughs> go figure. Um, but that's, I mean, that's how I'm looking at it. That's how I'm analyzing it, and it works.